Hello everyone, my name is Murray Livingston. I hope you're all doing very well. Welcome to this review of the Shimoda Action X70 Leisure Bag. I'll do a quick comparison as well with the uh, older version 1 60 liter Explorer. And basically I've used both of these bags all over the world uh, in the deserts of South Africa at 40 degrees Celsius and on some Monroe's up in Scotland at minus 10 and 70 mile an hour winds. So I've got lots of experience and I thought I would share my thoughts here today. quick reminder that if you haven't already please do consider subscribing to the channel um, as well as leaving a comment down below and clicking the thumbs up thanks so much so a small overview and some of the specs of the 70 liter Shimoda bag a reminder that I'll timestamp uh, the video so you can skip through to these sections that you are interested in um, this comes in at 2.3 kilos uh, just the bag on its own and that's a little bit heavier than the other one, but of course it is a bigger bag. And to my mind, at least, there are a number of improvements uh, with this version two action bag compared to the old Explore. So the first one is these uh, shoulder pads and the waist hip belt is much thicker, much better uh, padded and more supportive. And that makes the bag much more comfortable. There's also a few extra zip pockets like this one here they replaced the sort of uh, bungee cord version of the other one, and I think that's just a bit more useful. Most importantly for me is that both sides of the bag have a uh, tripod hole there. So that, and there as well. Um, so I do video work, obviously, and carrying two tripods, or even when I'm not doing video work, having the ability to carry a tripod and a water bottle was a big upgrade for me and made these bags uh, a lot more usable, but also you could balance the load a bit better uh, when you're carrying those tripods on the outside of a bag. This has got the, the roll top here on instead of the sort of uh, attached brain, which of course some people might find as negative, it's a bit less organization. Um, but if you're serious about getting out into the outdoors and doing big hikes, then really you should be doing uh, you should be using dry bags and loading things inside of your backpack anyway. So this is a big plus for me. Um, it just simplifies the outside form and everything about the bag. As with the uh, version one, there's no hip belt pockets. They put these little like bungee springy things here. I don't know, maybe you could fit like a small snack in there, but I've never really found a good use for them. Um, and then Another good thing is this belt is actually removable. It's sort of velcroed onto the inside here. So you can take that off and that's good for when you're going traveling. So I'll take that off and then I can bring this bag uh, on board with me. And I usually get away with that. Um, and I have actually had it measured and had to put it into one of those sort of compartment things. And it just about fits. <laughs> so basically compared to the version one, this is just an overall upgrade um, I think it's a bit more thought through and yeah, definitely uh, prefer the overall usage of this bag compared to the version one. In terms of workflow and usage overall, this is definitely a more comfortable bag. Um, all the sort of small adjustments that they've made have made it overall uh, more comfortable to wear for longer distances. Uh, of course, there's loads of straps that you can adjust to make the bag fit better and you can change the height of the shoulder pads depending on how long your torso is. So that's great and um, that's the same little version of one of course. And then uh, the back panel opens up and you've got loads of space. I've got these two core units here. These are the small ones and that's a pretty typical loadout for me. Filters, uh, the Kalinor 5, 100 to 500 and then an extra slot there for batteries, microphones, etc. Of course, um, I usually also have video camera with me. Yeah, so not even using half of the bag and then this roll top actually goes out even further. So loads of space for camping gear, food, water. 
and uh, this back sleeve, of course. Useful for travel if you've got your laptop with you. There's a snag here, which I... I mean, I guess I understand why they've done it. This little piece here is held on with a magnet to connect the hip belt to the actual bag. And that basically anchors it so that when you adjust it, it's tightening against the bag. Um, but of course, every time you take the bag on or off and you want to get rear panel, you hit that and you've got to remember to magnetically unsnap it to unzip it, which, you know, from a, a workflow point of view is kind of a pain. 90% of the time, I think I just forget to then re-clip this. Um, and I'm probably, you know, losing a little bit of comfort there because it's not properly uh, tugging on the bag itself. It's sort of floating. So that's one sort of minor annoyance, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. The airflow on the back is not great, but that's just going to be one of the compromises to having a rear access panel on a bag like this. If you want a better airflow on your back for hiking, then you do have to move up to a sort of dedicated hiking bag. But of course, that's sort of a decision, a trade-off that you need to make for yourself. The last thing on sort of the workflow and usage is probably just how waterproof it is. It doesn't come standard with a rain shell, um, so I did buy one of those separately. And it does help a bit, um, but of course it's not perfect. Dry bags and fitting things in dry bags inside the bag is going to be a rest bed. The zippers on the front and the roll top all work really well for waterproofing. Um, the biggest failure point is actually that rear panel zip. This is not waterproof. And when you're out in really heavy rain, that's the, the first point of failure, at least in my experience. I was out on a one row up in Scotland in just crazy wind and rain. And uh, I did have a little bit of water pooling inside at the bottom of my bag. And 90% of that was coming through the, the zipper, um, which, yeah, I mean, I guess with such a big zipper, there's not really a way to make it waterproof. Um, but I wish, I don't know, I'm not sure what the solution is. It's just something definitely to note. That's probably my biggest downside to this backpack is the, the waterproofness of that back zipper. So what are my final thoughts and who is this bag for? Well, it is certainly a great bag. There's, there's no getting around that. It's really comfortable. It can haul a heck of a lot of gear. And so for someone who's looking to do multi-day hikes and they specifically want a photography gear, a uh, photography bag, then this is definitely one to consider. Uh, of course, there's other options on the market as well. And there's also the option of getting a hiking dedicated bag. So there's something from like Gregory or Osprey, or even some of the ultralight backpack options, especially over in the States. In the UK, it's a bit more limited. Um, but some of those are starting to have rear and side panel access. So it's really a toss up. Um, if you're starting from new, then I think it's worth exploring and uh, considering the range of options. And then lastly, Shimoda definitely has great customer service. I had an issue with my version one or something on the inside tour. I send them out a photograph. Uh, they couldn't send out a replacement part. So they actually sent me an entirely new bag. No questions asked or which I didn't ask them to do, obviously. Um, and yeah, so definitely great customer service. Uh, that's a big plus of getting the Shimoda Action X70 liter bag. Right, that's going to be it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something about the Shimoda bags. Please do remember to subscribe to the video, leave a comment down below and smash that thumbs up button. Thanks everyone. I will see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>